Well, we've got 15 projects happening, STEM projects, in the science rooms, technology rooms and art rooms, so we can go and see a few of them as we go. Here at Mulberry School for Girls, it's day three of a week of cross-curricular STEM project work. In here we've got STEM 6, which is the future food. They're having a tomato fest, so they've been exploring varieties of tomatoes, how we can grow them sustainably. This week is our very first themed week, and it's called How Should We Live Now? and at the, at the root of that is ideas about sustainability. This one's called No Such Thing As Waste um, and they're looking at composting. We've got 15 groups running STEM sustainability projects which represents about 300 girls. These are the green shoppers uh, and this project is maths led so they've done quite a lot of analysis of the kinds of things people might have in their shopping trolleys. We're exploring vertical groupings, we're exploring cross-curricular collaborations. This is the big wardrobe. Uh, looking at clothing and other household object recycling. The idea of closed loop thinking has been really at the basis of all of our 15 projects that are running this week. The Nuffield materials have really given us a framework for thinking about that in terms of closed loop thinking. The concept of a closed loop relates to natural systems of gathering and cycling waste so that materials are constantly being reused. The Nuffield Foundation has produced Futures, a set of materials which explores the theme of sustainability. These materials encourage pupils to explore problems through a series of science, maths and d and activities and contain support, guidance and training for schools wanting to develop their own cross-curricular projects. The materials that we're offering schools are 27 hours of, of teaching and learning divided into to five pods. Uh, there's an introductory pod, there's a pod on waste, there's a pod on climate change, there's a pod on transport. And those pods are full of activities which are used to train pupils with skills that they can then use as an inquiry-based learning that follows. Way, we're getting water pumped. For STEM Group 7, science teacher Sarah Elston has used the materials to introduce the theme of sustainability and closed-loop thinking. So on the first day, we used um, the introduction a bit about the oil production and uh, population growth and the comparison between the two. So we talked a bit about the fact that the oil was running out and the effect it would have on the world and the fact that what we used all the oil for so that we could introduce the idea of a closed loop system uh, and apply it to what we were doing in this particular project of finding energy for growing. These students are working together as part of a school-wide consultation for a project where the aim is to power the school greenhouse in a more sustainable way. We have two greenhouses that are attached to two science rooms that are sitting on the side. They have a um, hydroponic growing system that we have had installed in them. So we have this uh, system that pumps minerals through the granules uh, for each plant. So there's an electric pump that is running the minerals round through the system all the time. We also have, um, as you can hear, a fan that goes on to keep an air circulation, also keep it cooler in here because they're quite hot greenhouses. So there's quite a lot of electricity that is needed. So what we're trying to do is find a different way to get that energy and we're hoping to be able to get solar panels and maybe even a wind turbine that will give us the energy that we need so that we're not taking more energy from, from the grid. Trying to find a way to power um, the solar panels. If you like, put light on them, then it creates energy. And instead of using electricity, we use the energy of the sun, like natural energy. Sustainable Futures is a key stage three STEM project. It's based on the theme of sustainable living. It's an important theme really because schools often engage in environmental education and quite often the kids get quite disillusioned because there's this sense of fatalism that things are getting very bad and very gloomy. Um, and the nice thing about this project is it approaches it from a very positive uh, perspective where, where pupils are asked to envisage and look forward into the future with a designly approach and a conceptual model that, that they can really see that something good could happen. So what we've got 
going on in this room is um, all the different groups are busy operating, working away. In this area here, we've got the research group. They're the group that are busy finding out information about solar panels and wind generation. Um, the group over there are doing the electric circuit building. So they're putting together the solar panels to drive tiny little fans, just to represent the solar panels on the roof and the fans in the greenhouses. And then we've got the building uh, modelling group. They're actually making a model of the building where the solar panels are going to go. Over there is the group that are working on the presentation to explain the project and also explain the, the bigger picture of what this project is about. Modelling the real thing, closing the loop, making our greenhouses self-sufficient. That's the plan. The Futures material is based on, I think, two key principles. One, that, that waste is food in nature, so nothing is wasted. Nature produces more than it needs, but nothing is wasted. Waste is food for something else. And the second key thing is that nature works by using today's sunshine rather than buried sunshine. And that's mirrored beautifully at Mulberry School here, where their project is about capturing sunshine. This is the greenhouses that we've got. We're looking at them now from the outside, and this is where we're, we're installing solar panels, not actually on the greenhouses, because that's not the best place for them. The best place for them is actually over here on the walkway there. This is the science uh, walkway, and we're, um, we're modeling this part because we want solar panels to go, because um, it's going to, um, for the greenhouses. So, and we're adding like details so the students know uh, what part of the school is. The model itself is going to be a great educational tool. The model will, will tell the rest of the school what we're doing. They really are starting to get the language to be able to, to communicate the kind of thinking that we're doing out to the rest of the school. The groups basically chose themselves more or less because they're from years 7, 8, 9, 10 and so they don't know each other. They get a sense of group work in a different way than what they normally do within their classes. You want to put the solar panels on the roof, mm -hmm. yeah, so how, do, how long do you think the roof is going to be? It's one metre, 70 centimetres. They're having to kind of communicate across the groups as well, gathering more information. So for instance, the building modelling group have had to use their math skills to scale down the real full-size walkway to a certain size that would have fit on their piece of red card that is our baseboard. It's good because it's teamwork and it's quite a big project and we needed like lots of people working on it together. I mean if we had just done it like maybe like everyone doing everything it would have probably taken a lot longer. As everyone's doing different parts that's why at the end we can bring it together and it's more easier to finish at the end. It's a really useful way of showing them, in my mind, what the real world is like. You know, we don't work in isolation. We don't uh, do things on our own or with our friends. Or we do things with people we, we know kind of. We have a kind of working relationship with them. We work in teams and the teams have to communicate with other teams. So it gives them a proper sense of what working in the real world is about. The futures materials, the activities themselves contain some science and some maths and some technology, but perhaps more important than that are the skills that allow the pupils to navigate between those. So we're really working towards a kind of STEM fluency. So it's a new way of approaching teaching and learning, I think, and uh, teachers will still need, obviously, to teach their science and maths in, in their own lessons, but this is an addition and this is a way of enhancing and joining up what they're learning in those subjects. I think educationally, it's absolutely essential that pupils do they do learning and work that is real, that's based in the real world. And if they can actually uh, use their school community, their school resources, to produce something which is of value to the school, then you've achieved a, a really significant educational objective. Normally it's like out of textbooks and, all that and stuff like that. And this is really fun because it's like doing something real, if you know, like problem solving. Okay, I'd like you to share the ideas behind the skills you've been using. The skills you've used today, how you could be improving your learning, and again, another link to other subjects. There's a wide range of different models to how this might be delivered, and, and the nice thing about the way the, the topic is actually conceived is it has that built-in flexibility. So it might be that schools choose to run a fairly small project, and they might run an introduction, 
they might run a pod on transport and then they might do a project then on transport, which is a, a shortened version. So there's, there's a variety of models and, and scales and ambitions that schools will use. STEM learning is by its nature cross-curricular and by its nature embedded in the real world. We want pupils to have an opportunity to take part in real activities and the Futures material provided a real bedrock for that, that we could build project work from. 